Welcome to the StockMetter.com studios here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I'm your stock mentor, Brian Johnson, making professional trading simple. And uh, welcome. I am doing these videos on a Saturday morning. I decided to get them out early. Very, very busy tomorrow with Easter. And we do leave for, we as in my wife and I, are leaving for Vegas for a week. Uh, so I still will be doing videos. They may be out a little bit later than usual, but I will try to keep that schedule uh, as close to normal as I can for everyone. Uh, please bear in mind, too, the last time I did this, I had to use my laptop. My laptop uh, did a good job, but I think the audio was a little messed up one day, and I don't think it was quite as clear a picture as what we're getting, uh, as what I get with my regular computer. So <laughs> next week, you'll get the gist as we go through it, uh, go through the markets day by day, but please bear with me <laughs> because it might be a little bit, uh, might be a little bit less clear uh, from a video standpoint. Hopefully I can still get the point across to all of you. Um, after closer inspection, I was looking at trend lines and I was looking at market action and really, it's really pretty simple what's going on. And that is more market consolidation. Pretty easy to recognize here in this chart in front of you and what I have done is I have taken all my blue trend lines because I really don't care about them right now and I have thinned them made them very thin and I want you guys just to focus on this lower support line this upper resistance line this is what we're seeing in all the indices and that is chop 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 so if you've had your hand slapped quite a bit the last few weeks very uh, very common in the sideways trading ranges to see that so keep that in mind as we push forward. You might want to stay away from the indices until they break one of these more major levels and maybe move more towards some stock plays and see if there's something moving there. A lot of times you'll get the stocks moving one direction or another when the indices are not. So here we had back here to start this whole thing. We had a shoulder, a head, and a shoulder come right down, tried to break it, and of course headed straight back up and now has been chopping sideways. So this head and shoulders pattern obviously was a failed formation. Now we're just moving sideways. Once again, this is all chop action. Uh, a lot clearer on a 60 minute than what it is on a daily. Flipping to a daily, you guys can see here, just a little bit harder to see that, but it's the same motion. It's exactly what we're seeing here. The sideways chop action is exactly what we saw back here at the top of this move and all in through here and right back here and i can go back and keep showing you this because it's just lather rinse repeat here uh, with all of this uh, market action it's the same stuff we've been seeing and what it turns out to be is ultimately bullish it's a high base it's a trading range it's consolidation it's whatever you want to call it but overall it's bullish so even though it has broken this blue line that is maybe our first for the armor. Um, it can still, and obviously I still think will, maybe for the first few days here, move uh, upwards. It's a common misconception that once a new, for instance, we just finished a quarter, uh, January, February, March, end of quarter, great. And then it's a common misconception that starting April 1st or starting whatever, uh, beginning of April, things just are going to crash. They're going to absolutely fall apart. You know what? It really is not the status quo for the markets. If you go back and look, that's not usually how it works. So it's, uh, you know, it, it would be very, uh, I would have to really assume a lot of things to believe that that's going to happen come next week. And I don't think it's necessarily going to happen. Why? Because the charts aren't telling me that. Now, breaks below these larger levels, okay, now I start to think about it. But until then, I'm still neutral to bullish short term on these markets. Uh, if we push up, uh, what would be the most logical place to go? Well, right to this blue line. I think this blue line might continue to hold as resistance, but that does not mean we can't continue to move up. So I'd be watching this as we push forward. This does typically turn into a quote-unquote kiss of death, where it pushes up, breaks this blue line, pushes up. Touches it again, then rolls over and then starts to come back down, which would be indicative of maybe what we're seeing here. A one, two, three with a sideways four and now a five up. This could be five of three. This could be five of five. For those of you that are aliticians, you understand what I'm talking about. The point is 
whatever this ending is up here, that just means the next move is down. What that next move is and how far it goes is yet to be seen. I'm looking for targets right now back to the 10, uh, 1050 area. Uh, but there's a lot of strong support below us for the bulls to ride off of. So anyway, just keep in mind that this is bullish. Uh, this is bullish to be staying sideways like this. It's consolidation just like we've seen in the past over and over and over again. NDX on a 60 minute. Here I've taken and thinned these blue lines and show you this line down here and this line up here. It's a little bit of extra support resistance through the middle of this. Same concept here. Waiting for major breaks of either one of these levels. Still intact. Now, from a daily standpoint, it has not broken this blue line. Not a big surprise. The NASDAQ is a very, very strong market right now. So it would not surprise me to see it chop sideways and then hit this and move up where everything else is breaking through it. And then they're moving up. So while everything is testing the underside of this blue line down the road, the NASDAQ could very well continue to stay above this blue line just because it's been so strong, just a very, very strong, um, uh, very strong move in the NASDAQ. Here we are right up to this overhead resistance area. Now we are right at that 1960 to 1970 level I told you would act as overhead resistance. It has for the last couple weeks. Um, if the bears are going to help themselves, they need to kind of maybe drop this down over the next week or so and bring it back down into some normal levels. Otherwise, the longer it stays up there, the more bullish it is, and the better chance there is that we're going to push through it. Where's my next level? Up above 2,000. Really, I've got this line drawn in here on the weekly, and it would coincide with this blue line that I've now drawn in here. And uh, uh, yes, it seems a little overstretched. Yes, it is definitely due for a pullback, but until... Until we see some more major breaks, you guys cannot let your bias get in the way of what's happening here. So we'll just continue to watch this. Any breaks up and over 1970 on the NDX 100 probably continues to move us upwards uh, into this area here. SPX on a 60 minute. Now, this one's acting a little differently. We have this overhead resistance. We have this lower support. So same concept there. However, this has been moving in somewhat of a little bit of, a, uh, of an uptrend here. So you can see it kind of sliding its way up. I like these two extra channel lines I've drawn in here on the SPX. I think those should act very nicely as support and resistance going forward. Um, if we cannot break above 1180, maybe we will start to see a rollover in these markets just short term, I'm only guessing short term. But until then, this is still very bullish behavior to see it Staying within this range, staying high, and consolidating sideways. More clear on a daily, but you can see it kind of doing that. This kind of move up and then chop upwards. Um, we've seen this in the past quite a bit. And uh, be uh, going into a little bit more detail. So for my subscribers watching this, watch a subscriber's video next. Because I'll go into a little bit more detail on what I'm seeing here in the SPX. But same type of a concept, looking for it to come back up, maybe retest the underside of this trend line as we push forward. Here it is on a weekly. We are so close, 50, 45 points away from this upper 200 week moving average. If the markets continue to grind their way upwards, this is definitely the overhead target right here. There's a lot of uh, other overhead resistance areas in this particular area as well. Somewhere between 1225 and 1250-ish or so. There's a lot of overhead resistance. So we'll watch that now starting a new week, starting a new full week of trading. Maybe we start to see the big money come back. We'll see what they do with it when they uh, when they decide to start, just start trading again. The VIX, yeah, not much movement last week. It was down 30 cents, so it's basically break even on the week. Still staying within this trading range right here. And uh, just really telling us there's still no fear in the markets. Uh, can it go lower? Absolutely, it can go lower. It's very, very low right now, but that means nothing. What we're looking at here is while the markets are making a high basing formation, this is making a low base formation. So any break back below this green line, I think it starts to trace this blue line on the way downwards. Apple on a 60-minute. Now, I talked about this a little bit. Every move it's made has been a gap up. 